All right, let's finish off chapter four. Quite a challenge. We're trying to connect again what we see standing outside with our sheep, whether our sheep might be, and looking around our horizon, up in our sky with the altitude, azimuth, and so on, with what an alien would see or what we would see from space. And the last thing that we want to do, we've been working on the last section in chapter four, has to do with the tidal effect. It's a big player in the universe, bigger than just the two things that we've talked about. We talked about the fact that Earth on moon, so we know that Earth on moon, okay, Earth pulls on moon, so moon goes in an orbit around Earth, otherwise it would go straight by Newton's first law. Now I can show that better if I do a top view, side view, top view. So just be clear which view you're showing, and then I can see it orbiting like that. And that's gravity. But Earth, of course, pulls stronger on the side closer, pulls stronger on the side of Moon, closer to Earth, than it does on the side farther from Earth, the near side and the far side because the near side's closer and gravity's stronger if you get closer and weaker as you get farther away. And it's a small effect, or it's a, it's a small difference, but it's enough to have, over the course of time, made it so that the same side of moon always faces us, right? So that's kind of cool. And as it does, it goes through phases, that same side. There is one near side and there is one far side that we cannot see directly from Earth. Now, we also said then that there is no side of moon that stays dark. There's no dark side of the moon, but there is a far side. It just doesn't always stay dark. That a lot of people don't realize that when you draw the picture, you can see it, that was the last video. Now we're gonna talk about what's the effect that moon has on Earth. And by the way, sun adds a little bit, or takes away a little bit. You're going to see that. Ocean tides. We've got oceans. Moon doesn't have oceans, so Earth can't give ocean tides on moon. Moon doesn't have oceans, but it's still called the tidal effect. Maybe tidal effect because here, moon causes our ocean tides. Let's see how. Okay, so we're going to check in on that. I want you to remember something. Over here, let's see how it's looking. I want you to try to keep in mind, these are drawings on the board. Uh, we don't normally see this. We, we're lucky if, if someone has actually stepped outside and looked up and seen moon phases. Again, if Earth was this, was this size, well, sun would be a lot bigger. If I take sun, a star, and shrink it down to this size, Earth would be how big? A grain of sand. Earth would be a grain of sand. You can get 100 across. And if we take this softball and go out 10 long paces, 10 meters from here, then sun would be out there. Earth would be here. I can put that grain of sand on my pinky tip. I can take an identical size grain of sand, cut it in half, Take half of that, cut that in half, that little quarter of a grain of sand would be moon. I put it there, it would be orbiting around my pinky tip with Earth right there. That's how close moon is to Earth compared to one AU, sun. In fact, we know sun is 400 times wider than moon, 100 times wider than Earth, 109, if you want to pick it closer to that. It's not exactly. And sun is 400 times farther away than moon from Earth. Okay, so keep that, keep that sense of scale. So my drawings aren't exact that way, but they, they exaggerate the point so that you can see it. And I'm going to really exaggerate the ocean depth on our picture. All right, let's come over here, chat a bit, see where we are. So I'm going to come way over here, take a look a little bit about, at the book. And I will do that. So yeah, let's do that here. Take a peek. Oh, cool stuff. Let's see what I've got. All right. 
Yep. Turns out there are two high tides and two light, low tides every day. You wonder why. People have known this for a long time. They've done fishing for a long time. Didn't know why, just did. In fact, it's a high tide and then a low tide and then a high tide and then a low tide. They happen to be separated by approximately, again, without worrying about hyper detail, right now this is an introduction, we have a high tide and about six hours later we've got a low tide and about six hours later we've got a high tide and about six hours later we've got a low tide. Why? What's going on? Tidal effect. Where does the tidal effect come from? It comes from gravity. The fact that gravity pulls stronger on the near side and weaker on the far side. Keep it simple. So let's take a look at this. So what I'm saying here is this is Earth, this is the North Pole, so remember your, your globe here, it's not a side view, we're not showing tilt, it's too much information. North Pole, Earth spinning eastward, 24 hours, right, so spinning eastward. I'm drawing our ocean ridiculously smooth and, and thick, atmosphere is thinner than that line. So anyway, that's supposed to be our ocean, just to exaggerate this point. All right, cool. If there was no tidal effect, then moon being way over here, can you see it? Let me check. Moon being way over there. Yeah, you can see it. Wouldn't be having any, any effect. But there is a tidal effect. So moon pulls stronger on the near side and weaker on the far side. So what a really good guess would be is the following. Yeah, that would make sense, right? So you'd be spinning around. Earth, a uh, moon would pull stronger on the near side, stretching it, and weaker on the far side. You'd be missing one critical piece. Imagine her. She's spinning around. Here, the water level would stay the same. No tidal effect. Here, clearly, she'd be drowning, right? It'd be ridiculously high tides. Then you see a low tide because the water's lower. Over here there'd be a low tide too, but she'd spin low tide, high tide, low tide, and then what? I don't know, medium tide, low tide, maybe it goes all the way. What, what, uh, this is not quite right. We're not done yet. This is good, but moon also pulls on Earth. This is something that in the book I don't go into. Uh, it's just too long a uh, kind of a, a, a explanation to try to make that clear. But get this and go along with this. What actually happens is that. So you notice that Earth shifted over. Earth shifted. The water stayed like I had it before, but now the oceans. Or I've shifted Earth. So as we spin around, we've got a low tide, low on her, right, her waist, high tide, low tide, high tide, six hours, six hours, six hours, six hours, approximately, but good. How high, how low also is affected by the depth of the, the surface underneath the ocean and things like that. So, so we're not going to get into that picky thing. We'll get a little bit, though. And we're going to be able to answer something here, too. We're going to be able to ask a question and answer the question two ways, actually. Um, whether or not you can blame it on a full moon. Whether or not a full moon affects your moons. Okay. All right, so we see from this picture, yes, moon pulls stronger on the near side and weaker on the far side, stretching that ocean out, exaggerated. But Earth's got a shift over here. So that surprisingly, not only is the near side having a high tide, but the far side is having a high tide, no matter what phase. No matter what phase. However, we're going to see some phases have higher high tides. When you've got a higher high tide, you're going to have a lower low tide. And some phases have not so high and not so low. We'll see sun's roll in that in a bit. Okay, so get this. Here it is, moon pulling stronger on the near side than the far side, stretching out those oceans, but Earth, that Earth shift gives a surprise that I haven't fully explained. 
You good? There's another factor that I don't, I don't emphasize on my exams, but perhaps you should know. As Earth spins, it kind of drags the ocean around. So actually, the high tide's like 10 degrees off from straight in line with moon, whatever moon phase is. So that's maybe an interesting effect and it's measurable and all that stuff, but we're not gonna worry about that. There's something else that, that's really cool. So that's the one that I, I emphasize. Uh, this idea tunes you into a lot. And there's also something, again, very cool in the book. And we've really needed, needed to develop this awareness, this sense. I hope you can see this. If this is you, and the arrow is east, because Earth is spinning east, 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 east. This is the North Pole, east, east, east. That's your ground. We're teeny tiny, so it almost looks like a flat Earth, although you don't get up and see how curved it is easily. Um, so this, of course, is exaggerated, as are the oceans. But notice this. This is your ground. I've got a high tide. Six hours later, low. Six hours high. Six hours low. Six hours high. Where's moon for you? No matter what phase. This is true no matter what phase. Remember that. Moon is not on your horizon. You don't look around here to see moon. Moon is there. Moon is high up. How high, you know, we'll worry about that. But moon is high, it's above your horizon. When moon is high, tide is. When moon is low on your horizon, you spin around, and now you go, oh, there's moon, low on my horizon. And I see moon low on my horizon. I've got a low tide. Now, if you can't see moon, you'd have to figure it out. But if you can see moon in your sky, if you can see moon low on your horizon, and then as you spin, if moon is getting higher, the tide is getting, right, higher. If moon is high and it's getting lower, the tide is and getting lower. All because moon pulls stronger on the near side than the far side. Okay, That's the primary reason for our ocean tides. Now, you can use Newton's law of gravity and pretty quickly make this calculation. We orbit sun. So sun pulls on Earth about 178 times stronger, my class, you don't have to remember that number, but uh, than moon does. Sun pulls stronger, we're orbiting sun, we're not orbiting moon, right? We're orbiting sun, because it pulls on us. And even as far away as it is, it's still got a lot of mass, so it pulls on us, and it pulls stronger than moon does. But, keeping in mind that distance, the distance from sun to the near side of that grain of sand compared to the distance of sun to the far side of that grain of sand is not that big a difference. And without going into it too much, you can calculate this, there is a little effect from sun. But moon, as tiny as it is, is close. And so the distance from moon to our near side and the distance from moon to our far side creates more of an effect. Moon wins the tide wars but sun can exaggerate the tides or reduce the tides depending on the season. No, <laughs> sorry, not the season. Uh, depending on the phase, that's it. Ah, okay, <laughs> so depending on the phase. The moon always wins no matter what phase, but there's the difference. So let me do it here and then we can draw it up on the board if you want.
So you know where a moon is, the side of Earth near moon has a high tide, and the side far, surprisingly, because that little shift, has a high tide. As Earth spins around, we got high, low, high, low. This is a new moon. How do I know that? Ah, I know that because the sunlight is coming over here, hitting this side, and I know that because we see the near uh, side of moon faces Earth, so Earthlings see a new moon. However, in one, about two weeks over here, we see a full, uh, full moon. Still, high tide and high tide. As I said, sun adds a little bit. Notice that sun's over here. So sun is also going to create, add a little, a little high to the high tide, and a little high over here too. It's going to affect like this. That's going to bring this in. When moon is in line with sun, sun is helping out. Here, let me help you stretch that ocean. You're going to get higher high tides and lower low tides also. That's surprisingly a little bit true that sun, while it's over here and moon is over here on a full moon, they're still in line and still creating that extra high tide and the extra low tide. These are called spring tides. It's kind of a horrible name. It's not the season spring. It's, it's just a bad name, right? I call them springy tides, stretchy tides. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, new moon. When moon's over here, the high tides will be both here and here. The high tide will be where a moon is, that side and then the far side. But sun will be working against it. Sun will reduce that effect. And we'll come over here in a second. Sun will reduce that effect, making it so, ah, if moon's here, I would stretch those high tides, but sun's going to want to go the other way and so it reduces the high tide and reduces the low tide. Not so high, not so low, not so deep. Neap, N-E-A-P, if you want, you can look up the origin of that unusual word for us these days. A neap tide happens when moon is at its first quarter or third quarter. So if you want really high, high tides, or really low, low tides to go look at the uh, tide pools, marine biology, etc. If you're gonna have really low, low tides, you're gonna have really high, high tides. They're gonna rush in, so you have to be careful. If you want not so high, high tides and not so low, low tides, not a big a change, first quarter, third. Springy tides, exaggerated tides, new and full moon. Why? Because sun is either working with moon, either of these, or moon's going to stretch it this way and sun's going to reduce it a little bit in the neap tide. Let's go back over and talk about this and see some cool things. Of course, our ultimate goal is, uh, can you blame your moods on a full moon? Let's take a look. All right, so let's throw moon in here. We've done this. Our work with phases did a lot of things. It, it uh, connected the scene from Earth and scene from space points of view. Helped us understand moon phases and that they rise at different times. In fact, let's go over that real quickly. You know that if you're standing somewhere on Earth, we're getting about latitude and tilt and all that. You know, spin eastward, six hours, six hours, six hours, six hours, good enough. Day, night, sunlight hitting here, giving us day, sunrise, noon, sunset, midnight. So I've got that. Let's do this. Little review, east, tall person standing there. Sun is not on my east horizon. I don't look that way for sun. I don't look on the west. I look high in the sky. It's noontime. So we've got 12 noon, 12 noon. We go every three hours real quickly. Make sure you can do it. Don't just be a follow. Sun is getting 
past the meridian, PM, 3 PM, 3 PM. Now I can see sun, aha, sun is high, sun is getting lower, sun is low, sun set. We'll say 6 PM just to make this reasonable, 6 PM. 9 p.m., 12 MDNT, midnight, 3 a.m., aha, now I see sun rising because I'm crossing the terminator, sunrise around at 6, 6 a.m., <laughs> sorry, sun is before the meridian, antes meridian, still always to the right, roughly 9 a.m. Let's take a look at our moon phases. Always reviewing, it gets easier and easier, eventually get used to it. Trust the learning process. Let's check out new moon, what can we say? So if I got moon over here, sun is way out there, and I'll draw it just like this, and of course sunlight hits the right side in my picture, and I've got like that, and of course we know that's new moon, because. Earthlings see that from space. We are not looking at a first quarter. We are not looking at a first quarter. We're not looking at a first quarter. We are seeing from space the fact that moon will always, in my picture, be lit on the right side. But what we see from Earth, we see the phases. Okay, so now we think about our tides. Haha, <laughs> my very advanced, fancy, super expensive ocean illustrator. Moon pulls the ocean. Stronger on the near side than the far side, but Earth shifts. So I get a high tide on the near side of Earth and on the far side of Earth compared to Moon. I know I didn't work so hard. I guess I could have made it go like that. But notice that as I pull the high, the lows get lower and the highs get higher. So I'd have a high tide around noon. I'd have a low tide around sunset. I'd have a high tide. 12 midnight, I'd have a low tide, 6 a.m. Just use the picture, I can't remember all of you just tell me, I have to visualize the picture, okay? What's true if that's full? Well, if it's full, about two weeks later, you know that's full because it's like this. And you know the moon creeps every day, it moves a little bit, about a fist, fist and half a thumb, something like that. Right? But you also know this, that on a full moon and on a new moon, sun is helping out, giving what kind of tide? A springy tide. People call it spring. I like springy. Stretchy spring and not the season. Happens every month, right? Again, every couple of weeks, we get a springy tide. It's not spring season. So we have a springy tide, right? Really high high and really low low. Good for tide pools, but the, when the water rushes in, the water's gonna rush in quite fast and it's gonna be quite high tide and it can be quite dangerous. Okay, so you know if you wanna go to, the, to see low tides on a new moon or a full moon or, or anywhere around there is good, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly a new moon, then you can go early in the morning and you're gonna get a nice low tide, right? But you better get out of there. You better get out of there because if I make that high, the low tides get a real low. That's good. I'm going to go see the go see all the marine biology at the ocean. But the high tide's going to come in. It's going to be very high. You can really rush in, and then it'll get very low. And, very and you know the times. If you visualize this, of course you can look at a chart. Do you at least have a sense that somewhere around the new moon or alternatively around the full moon, you're gonna have springy tides, good for tide pools, but also dangerous too. Also notice, remember, keep in mind, whenever moon is low on the horizon, the tide's low. Whenever moon's high, the tide's high. Moon is low, tide is low. Can't see it, good luck. Okay, next. I don't like to draw them all on there because it looks like they all happen in one day. If I go here, right? 
lit by sun way out there. That's what you see, a waxing crescent. When is it high for a waxing crescent? I just saw a beautiful waxing crescent uh, this morning. And uh, you say, well, how could you see it this morning? Well, it had to be later morning because it rises right around here. It was set around here. Where did I see it in the evening? Well, it depends on where I saw it. Anyway, you can try to piece that together. Kind of crazy. When I'm getting high tide, I'm going to get a high tide when moon is high. So instead of being here, it's going to be like this: high tide, high, low, high, low. Close enough. That's pretty impressive. I'm good with that, right? It's not going to be exaggerated because sun's going to go this way. It's going to give me in between, and that's going to be identical to what phase. Pause. See if you can figure that out. This is how you learn, not by just watching. It's gonna be identical when it's over here. And by the way, you probably guess wrong. If you just guess. A little bit lit, waxing crescent. Mostly lit, the waning gibbous. High, low, high, low, in either case. And then I go over here. two weeks later, one week from new, two weeks, three weeks, first quarter, third quarter. And in that case, we see what we've got, seen from Earth. And when moon is low, tide will be low. When moon is high, tide is high. Moon is low on my horizon, high, low on my horizon, low. Alternatively, over here, you can flip it. You're still going to get a high tide and a low tide and a low tide. And what's the sun going to do? The sun's going to be doing a little bit of this business, reducing. Not so high, not so low. Less of an effect. That can be good, that can be bad, whatever. It is what it is. So sun has a little effect on that. Okay. And so you could draw, again, you could draw the oceans. Here you draw it, if you want, you could draw it like, oh, I'm drowning. Draw high and low, like that, or you could really exaggerate it, like that. For either one of them, it's the same. But it's not that, the thing is that you know sun's there, so eh, it's not gonna be that high, it's not gonna be that low. So you could do things like that. Whereas here, and then you could do it over here too, right? Check out those phases, I'll leave that to you. Now, our big question. What's our big question? People say, all the time. I hear it all the time. If moon can create ocean tides, it can move the oceans. Moon can move the oceans. And we're made of mostly water. And our fluids carry hormones. Then, if moon moves oceans, isn't it messing with me? Isn't it affecting my moods? And you say, oh, yeah, well, if that's true, I know I get most exaggerated effects during a full moon, but also a new moon. And less exaggerated here. So, shouldn't I be going? Full moon, oh, I'm feeling crazy, blame it on the moon. Oh, I'm feeling less crazy. Oh, I'm starting to feel better, a little less crazy. And then you go, oh, I'm feeling crazy again. I'm getting a springy time. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling crazy, feeling less crazy, feeling less crazy. Feeling more crazy, feeling more crazy. Check it with your calendar, mark how crazy you're feeling. <laughs> and, and look at it carefully. And you go, yeah, but, but I know that that's true. I just know that full moon, you know, full moon makes me. So look at it. Because if we have a conclusion and we look for when it's right, we ignore all the times when it's wrong. So to do science, to move our knowledge to, to more and more certainty, we have to look. Now there's two ways we can look at this question, we can answer this question. One is through science. One is through science. Check your view here. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Get some stuff out of the way. And we can do that there. Sunlight. We see new moon or full moon. Why do we have tides? Well, because moon pulls stronger on the near side and weaker on the far side. We've got that little shift of Earth, so we got a high tide, high tide, low tide, low tide. Okay, we know what time of day it is, all kinds of things from that picture. It's amazing, right? You can't memorize it all, but you can draw the picture and go, oh, oh yeah, I see, I see things, and having that awareness is really great. Okay, so the reason we have a high tide and low tide is because moon pulls stronger on the near side than the far side. So over here, it's going to be High tide, high tide, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. Right. So as we spin under the water, in a sense, there's a little drag, and you know, more complicated than that. So, oops, that's wrong. Side facing sun is lit. Side facing Earth is what we see. Now, consider moon. Maybe it's over your head. Maybe it's a full moon. Do you think the distance from moon to your head and moon to your feet is very dramatic? If that's true, if it's creating a tidal effect in your body, then if you lay down, you should be fine because the distance from moon to your head and moon to your feet is the same. You can calculate this. We use Newton's laws. We can calculate this quite simply. The person next to you has a tidal effect something like two million times more than moon on you. Hold a baby or hug a person, then you get in trouble. Because that tidal effect's 12 million times more than moon has on you. And that's why you feel funny. Maybe not. But you can, it doesn't make sense. Because a person is teeny tiny. The title, and you can measure it, you can calculate it. You, all this is, we use the science. We test it, right? We test Newton's laws. And if you keep pushing it, you find out, oh, they don't quite work in certain extremes. So bring on, bring on Einstein. But still, this result, this result holds. And then you go, well, I kind of get that. I mean, the distance to, sun, to my head, from moon to head, moon to feet, there's not that much. And math, you can calculate the tidal effect, and it's tiny compared. You got to blame the people around you, and then it should, if that was a big deal, then as they walk by, your moods would be changing like crazy, and you know you can blame it on people. Bottom line, being blame it on people. Okay, so then you go, well, maybe there's something that science doesn't know. There's a lot that science doesn't know, right? But there's a lot that we do know, right? I'm recording this on a on a phone. Crazy. You go to where people go wacky. If you if people kind of wig out, sometimes they got an episode, whatever, some something going on, you lose it, maybe it's frustration, who knows, whatever. But you're blaming it on the moon. You're saying it's full moon. So if that happens, you might end up in a police station or an emergency room, you or or someone else. So if a lot of people are going a little crazier on full moon, then you can have more activity in, in an emergency room of a hospital and more activity in a police station. So you go in there and you ask them. Let me just see, maybe there's something I don't know with my, my physics and, and, and math and, and uh, my calculations. And so you go in and you look at the book. You, you, first you ask them, say, is it crazier in here, in the emergency room, in the police station, on a full moon? And they'll say, yeah, it's crazy. It's, 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 really, it's so much crazier in here. Why? Because they notice on a full moon, they notice the craziness. And so what do you do? You look at their books. You watch their activity. And you see if there's a cycle. It's connected to moon phases. None, none, none. None. So that tells you how humans think, how we correlate things, how we make astrology work, or we make the full moon thing work. Now, it does affect ocean tides. So marine biology can adjust, life can make adjustments, and it, it reacts to it, and Etc. Etc. I'm not saying that I mean, tides are very important to Earth. In fact, there are even books written about what if we didn't have moon, we didn't have that tidal effect, etc. So, I'm not saying it's not important by any means. 
but moving our own liquids? No. There was a study done um, not that long ago in the 2000s, and it said uh, there were more traffic accidents published. Some psychology journal. More traffic accidents during full moon. So, wow, that data looked really good. People wondered about it. People looked at the data, looked at how they measured it. Well, it turned out that they were looking during a full moon, because of the times, etc. When they were looking was during high traffic hours and comparing it to non-high traffic hours. Yeah, guess what? There's more accidents in high traffic hours. And so that study got debunked, and that's how we do it in science. Like you notice something, but other people will challenge you right away. So I don't know of anything that says a full moon affects our moods. Well, it does mine, but you're, you have to look carefully. You know, before you know the phase of the moon, write down your moods. Do that for a while, as you might. You can't have a bias, right? So it's a little tricky to do science. It's a really tricky to combine the points of view of from Earth and from space. But you go round and round and trust, you can get it, and these exaggerated pictures really help you. And, uh, and then step outside and go, whoa, and you might get confused, but just keep going. You, you'll, you'll see things in a way you have never seen before. And you'll see it's hard to share that with a person unless they kind of take this journey too. So we're gonna move on now to study worlds. What are other worlds like? Well, first, let's study Earth. What's it like? Six layers, connected, very important moon what's it like our solar system what are the planets what are the moons what's that what's in our solar system how did our solar system form chapter seven is how our system solar system formed and studying worlds studying the planets and certain features of those worlds in chapter eight the leftovers of asteroids comets meteoroids in chapter nine dwarf planets uh, very quickly and then we'll go out to the stars okay cheers that helped Feedback is always welcome.